today we're going to make a Christmas tree ornament which also can be a pendant um, but smaller so what we're going to do is here's the ornament this is made out of uh, what did I make this out of 14 or 12 this is out of 14 gauge wire and I just made it larger so um, this is probably made with around oh give yourself a good fair amount of, of um, wire to use um, maybe 30 inches 34 inches of wire for a, for a, a an ornament and I just hammered it flat on the sides here and texturized the sides and the uh, center down here well, we're gonna make a pendant and you're just gonna if you want an ornament you're gonna do the exact same thing that we're gonna do with the pendant you just use more wire for the ornament so I've got 14 gauge soft dead soft copper wire here and you can see how it kinda this is a brand new spool so it's all sort of bent up here you never want to use um, uh, wire straighteners on your have your gauge wire because it'll just ruin them and you won't get anything done it won't have any effect on it so what you want to do is you want to take your rawhide mallet rawhide not metal because metal will flatten it and we're just going to go in and roll it and hammer out the bends and kinks and straighten it out now it's totally worth doing that because I would have wasted that. that that doesn't need to go into the scrap heap but this right here that's a little much to deal with so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off I'm frugal but I'm not ugh, I can't be bothered with some of this stuff you know okay so for the pendant I'm gonna give myself we're gonna do um, let's do two feet so 24 inches So I'll go ahead and measure off. This happens to be an 18 inch ruler, which I have never seen before, but they're quite handy to have. I'm in closed quarters here. I'm having a hard time maneuvering without hitting my tripod and stuff. So, ah, you guys know me by now. Fumble around. Okay, so I've got 18 inches there. So 18 and 6 inches is 24. There we go. And I'm using heavy duty cutters. These are great. These are Xeron. And um, I do have these for sale. I am working on my website. It's getting close. But um, if any of you are interested in any tools or anything, you can you can send me a message. I have them. And um, anyway, so I'm going to go in and I'm just going to try to straighten my wire out just a little bit more. Okay, I've got a big long piece of wire here that I'm going to be working with. So I am going to be banging it into things, so just be patient with me. Alrighty. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to flush cut both, both ends. That end is already cut. And that one could probably use just a little bit of a snip. Okay. So it's a pendant, and depending on what you want to hang it on, you want to make your bail, the, 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 the loop at the top that your uh, ribbon or your cording is going to go through. So you, you might want to make that kind of substantial. So you can either take it to the back of the uh, your round nose if they've got a large enough loop, or you can use bail making pliers. I'm going to go ahead and use the back side of this, and we're going to make a centered loop on this or like I always call a lollipop right so we're gonna take it back here remember nothing hanging off the edge here that ensures that you end up with a perfectly round loop and we're going to just really pull on that wire and roll it over until it touches and we end up with a P now we're gonna center this by taking our pliers into the back here right where it meets and we're going to just turn our loop and break that 
against our plier. And we end up with that, a centered loop. Okay, now, if you watch the one on the earrings, the earrings, the earring loop needed to go in this direction so that it hung on the ear wire, which had a loop that went in the opposite direction, but we want it to roll this way. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before with the earrings, is we're going to take our wire that we're using and we're going to measure or just draw off. Um, now, depending on how many rows you want at the top, um, I'm gonna to do two rows of, of coiled wire. So. I'm going to draw a line on either side of this wire and then I'm going to do it again. Line this up there and draw another one. Now if I wanted three rows of, you know what, I'm going to do three. Let's do three because this is a pendant so it's going to be a little bit more substantial. So let's do, there we go. I have four lines but it's the spaces in between those lines that count as wire. So we have one two, and three. Now we're going to take our Sharpie pen and we're going to mark our wire and we're going to lay our loop like this, not, not this way. But it might be easier if you, if you want to, you could lay it this way and, and, and mark, mark down here right on the bottom, on that bottom line there. You can use that bottom line as your as your template and you're going to mark it and then you could just roll this on its side and then continue your line over there like that. So now I have a mark from this bottom line here. I lined up my loop at the top and then marked the bottom line on my wire. Now we're going to take our round nose and I don't want to use the very very tips this is heavy gauge wire it's a little hard on the tips of your of your round nose so I'm gonna bring it in back onto my mark here that I have so we want this facing this way let's see here I'm gonna bring my pliers in like this I'm gonna pinch Ah, ah! Okay, so I'm going to, right on my mark, I'm going to pinch my mark at the mark on my round nose. So we end up with this kind of dealio. And now we're just going to go, it doesn't matter what direction you go in, now we're going to turn this around like so. So we have a figure eight. Well, actually not like a figure eight. The figure eight would be if it was facing the same direction. Okay, so now we're going to take and we're going to hold this in our in our chain, uh, excuse me, our flat nose. I'm going to pull this down a little bit and now we're going to start our spiral. My wire's really long, it's hitting everything. Yikes, see? There we go, now we're going. Okay, so that gave me enough space for another row. So I'm going to go ahead and just take advantage of that space and just do another row. It's going to be kind of big, but sometimes you just you just deal with what you get. <laughs> All right, so now I want to straighten this up. And I'm going to bring this down so that I will be starting my tree like so. Now I'm going to start, I'm going to put my uh, round nose right here 
lined up with the edge of this. And I'm going to start making some waves. I like making waves. Okay, we're going to get a little bit bigger. So we're going to come out. I just line it up with the, the wave before it. Okay, I think that that is wide enough, so now I'm just going to take the next one and line it up with this one right here. I don't really want it any wider. There we go. And I like that because now my bottom spiral is going to go in the opposite. This spiral is going in that direction. Now this one will be going in that direction. So it'll be in opposite directions. And I, I kind of like that. Okay. So there we go. And now I'm just going to make my spiral. So I'll start down here at the end. And we want our spiral to come this direction, sitting right on top of our wire here. So that's the way that we want to place our pliers, is perpendicular to our, to our wire. We don't want to be down here and then start rolling, and then we end up with a spiral on the side of this. So we want to be right on top of our wire, like so. Nothing hanging off the edge. And... Roll our. Now this is a this is a thicker wire, so you're gonna be you're gonna be struggling a little bit here. Just just be the boss and grab that wire and make it do what you want it to do. Now what what's happening here is we are creating a nice space in between our pliers, so we could just bring the wire up and over and through our pliers. Sometimes just using your fingers is a lot easier. Look how cute that is. Now that's a little, that's a little big on top, but I kind of got my spacing a little, a little off there. But hey, it still looks pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, you're gonna make a lot of these, and and no two are gonna be alike. And you know what? They're handmade. That's my thing, handmade. So as long as the proportions are nice, and it comes out looking like you want it to, you know, like a like a tree, <laughs> um, then. Who's to say it's wrong? Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to texturize this. And first of all, I'm going to straighten everything out with my rawhide hammer. And I'm hanging the bale off the edge here because I don't, I don't want to bang on that. And I'm going to flip it over. Okay, so let's take a look at our bale. See, it's a little bit off, so now I'm just going to have to come in here and tweak it a little bit to center that. There, isn't that cute? Okay, so let's go ahead and texturize it. Now, I don't like to, we're not going to texturize this here because what happens is it's overlapping this, and we'll end up smooshing this wire into this wire, and it weakens it. So we're just going to let this go. We're going to leave it alone. And we're just going to we're going to texturize this. I'm going to flatten these sides and give them a little bit of texture too. So 
we're going to use our chasing hammer and first we're going to flatten with this side and and I'm kind of I'm tapping and pushing out pushing out pushing out And it will warp it a little bit. We're going to have to do some adjusting, as always, when you start hammering. Paper's slippery. It's making it want to slip. See how that warped that? I mean, that still looks kind of funky, kind of cool. But we're going to go in and we're going to re-push these back and adjust them. And there we go. Isn't that cute? All right, so now let's do this part here. I'm going to give it a little tap, just flatten it a little bit. And now we'll go ahead and we're going to add a little, a little uh, hammered texture effect. Ah, my hammer's falling apart. So just little taps with the ball, with the ball part of the hammer. So you can see it really makes it warped and wonky. So we're going to grab our uh, rawhide here. Can you see the texture? Can you see that, how the, the light catches the little divots in there? And you can, you can, um, uh, I prefer these antiqued with liver of sulfur, so check out my link on how to uh, patina with liver of sulfur, and um, and that, or you can leave it shiny, whatever you like. Now my little pen marks here, that comes off with a little bit of alcohol. That's no big deal. It rubs right off. There. What do you think? Look how cute that is. Do you like it? Would you wear that? I would. I'd like this to wear this on a longer, longer chain probably. Or a cording. 
but um, you could you could do all kinds of different things with this. You could probably add some beads in there, uh, wire wrap some beads in there, um, put them on as you're doing your waves. I've never tried that before. You wouldn't want to do any hammering because then you'd crush your beads. But I mean, you know what? Use your imagination. There's there's all kinds of different things you could do with this. But what a cute little gift. Now see, here we have our now we have our pendant and our earrings. And if you wanted to pop the bottom out like I did the earrings there, you could do that if you wanted. But um, I think for a pendant, it, it's less likely to get things caught up in it, clothes or catch your clothes or whatever. But anyway, there you go. Now, if you wanted to do a ornament, you could use, I actually believe, okay, this is 14 gauge, this is 12 gauge wire. This is heavier wire. But look how cute that is. Isn't that adorable? Isn't that a nice, nice ornament? really rustic looking. You can make this out of any kind of craft wire you want. Um, just be careful if your craft wire has coating on it, like a non-tarnished coating, because once you hammer that, you break that coating, and now you've and the air will enter it, and it will start tarnishing the wire that, the base wire that it's made out of, which is usually copper wire. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you'll give it a try. I hope you'll be cranking out lots of little Christmas trees for this year. Merry Christmas and thank you so much for your support. I wish everybody a very, very Merry Christmas and a happy, happy new year. Take care.